think about the energy transition, you know, that transition is gonna require a massive deployment of new infrastructure. And deploying that infrastructure is gonna require a lot of capital. And so I really don't think we can talk about having an, an energy transition or combating climate change without having finance at the table. Uh, and so when we look at McKinsey and Company, which released a report in 2022 around what it's gonna actually cost to finance this energy transition, they found we're gonna need about $9 trillion per year all the way up to 2050 in global investment to achieve those goals. That's nearly $275 trillion in total investment. And so the opportunity is massive, uh, but the need is also massive to make sure that we have these capital providers at the table. I think nuclear energy is a necessary investment. So when we look at what the IPCC says about it, which is the climate arm of the United Nations, they identified the need for $100 billion worth of annual investment globally into nuclear if we're gonna achieve our goals. And not only is this investment necessary just to achieve our climate goals, it's necessary to make sure that we're on one of the cheapest pathways to achieving our climate goals. So um, a couple years ago, Vibrant Clean Energy put together a report uh, that identified that if nuclear energy is included in the transmission mix uh, as the US looks to decarbonize, we'll actually save our rate payers about half a trillion dollars. And so I, you know, I think we're at a point where we can't afford to not invest in nuclear energy. We're gonna need all types of investments. So when we look at the nuclear supply chain and the opportunities there, we're gonna need investments in our existing fleets to keep that carbon-free power flowing. We're gonna need investments in our supply chain so we can support the build out of, of new reactors. Uh, we're gonna need uh, investment in the kinds of projects and delivery models that we think are needed to deploy these new nuclear facilities. So it's really across the board. And I think that's gonna encompass, you know, some of the more traditional investors we've seen in this space, and also entirely new classes of investors who maybe have not been familiar with nuclear in the past, but are getting interested in this growing opportunity. I could honestly say that this is the most interest from Wall Street I've, I've ever seen in nuclear energy. And I think there's a couple factors for that. I think when we look at the growing need of, of decarbonization and the need for investment in this energy transition, you know, we're increasingly looking at technologies that can deliver, you know, clean, reliable power. And there's really nuclear second to none in that category. And so I think Wall Street's really coming around to that. They're really identifying and realizing that, that need. Uh, and that's driving a lot of interest. But also we're seeing really unprecedented customer demand. So when we think about the large tech firms, we think about industrial sector, all these sectors are looking for that clean, reliable power today. And so when we combine those two pictures, it really creates this massive opportunity for investment. And so, um, you know, big part of our NEI's goal right now has been to improve our relationship with the financial community because we know that, that those investment decisions are, are on the horizon and we wanna make sure that they're ready and prepared uh, when they come available. You know, I think the next step in this process though is that we're gonna need to move from identifying that this is a really great opportunity and ideally identifying that conceptually it's something that needs to happen. And we need to get to a place where capital is actually flowing to real projects. And we see some examples of that today, but if we're gonna meet the 200 gigawatts of new nuclear energy that the Department of Energy says that we need, uh, that's gonna have to ramp up massively. And so, you know, I, I think that relationship that we're developing with Wall Street Street uh, is only going to grow in the near future. Well, yeah, I mentioned a lot of the interest that's being driven by some of these new customers that are entering the space and the need to, to combat climate change. So maybe a, a better way to answer that question is just to talk about some of the changes that we've seen in some of the public discourse around nuclear and around the energy transition. And I think one really great place to start with that is the most recent COP28. Uh, so, you know, for many years, nuclear was, was excluded from COP. Um, and now in 2023, we had COP28, which was dubbed the nuclear COP. You know, we had uh, a number of countries come together and agree to triple nuclear. Uh, and we had just a, a large interest in how nuclear can help drive decarbonization in countries. And so uh, that really was, I, I think, uh, a sea change in the conversation. 
I think we're also seeing this interest manifest in, in other events as well. NEI hosts a nuclear financing summit every year. Uh, and this past year, our, our summit was oversubscribed. We had the most, most interest we've ever seen and you know, had standing room in the back. So it was really exciting to see that kind of interest that we're hearing in these conversations really come to fruition at, at an event. And then the last place I'd mention is, is like the Sarah Week, where you know, we saw nuclear just three years ago playing a, a pretty small role in the event. And now we have a lot of programming around nuclear coming up for, for Sarah Week, and I expect that trend to continue well into the future as well.